we were about two hours drive from Kliningrad when we uh, departed. Um, and I think for it also to be happening to, you know, the Secretary of State seems yeah. like quite a big deal. So, uh, Larissa, welcome. Tell me about your story about the, the Defence Secretary Grant Shapps played and how it was, oh, there was the term, electronically jammed by the Russians while you were on it. Yes, so we had quite a long day yesterday. Uh, we went uh, to and from Poland all in all in one day. Uh, we were seeing a major military exercise. Uh, British troops are taking part in Steadfast Defender, which is the largest exercise since the end of the Cold War. And on our return, uh, we were travelling uh, close to Kaliningrad, uh, that's Russian territory, and um, the signals were jammed on the plane. And it was quite interesting because Grant Shapps himself, the Defence Secretary, was in the cockpit at the time. He's um, said to be a, a big plane enthusiast. He's mm. actually got an aircraft himself um, and knows how to fly. Um, and he was in the cockpit and then he came out to say that uh, yes, that the pilot had informed him that um, it was supposed to be, to be Russian, uh, that the Russians had um, jammed the GPS signal. So the plane couldn't see where it was, as it were, on its on its map. Yeah, so it's got it has got other methods um, to enable it to do so to know where it is. Um, but obviously, it does rely heavily on GPS. Um, and actually, interestingly, we had been all complaining in the plane because we'd been lucky to have Wi-Fi uh, during the course of the trip. And then we obviously didn't have it for about half an hour and we were sort of questioning why. And then that obviously explained things. Yes. <laughs> I, I just had a, a picture flash through my head of a, it's almost like a movie scene where Grant Shapps grabs hold of the controls and because he's a pilot and brings the plane to safety. Um, but it obviously was not quite as dramatic as that. What was it like for you? I suppose you were completely unaware. Yeah, we, yeah. apart from the fact that we couldn't use our phones, um, we were unaware. Um, I hadn't, a, a few years ago, I was told that RAF aircraft uh, were having... Um, uh, sort of similar incidences where the GPS was being jammed uh, by the Russians. Um, mm. So I did know that this was going on, but I didn't quite um, expect it where we were. Um, I mean, we were about two hours drive from Kliningrad when we uh, departed. Um, and I think for it also to be happening to, you know, the Secretary of State seems yeah. like quite a big deal. Yeah, well, indeed. I mean, do we? I guess we don't know this, do we, Lewis? So did did Russia know that it was interfering with the the British Defence Secretary's plane? I asked a couple of people about this. Um, one source inside the MOD sort of suggested that they thought it was very unlikely. I spoke to an expert at the Royal United Services Institute, and again, they said that they couldn't be certain that obviously they would be able to see um, that the plane had taken off from RAF Northolt. Um, and that it had arrived where it had. Um, so they might have been able to guess, you know, who was roughly on board. Mm. Um, but they they are expect, they are suspected of doing this quite a lot. So it probably yeah. was just fluke. And the and the the, uh, the more I don't know, mundane explanation, if you can describe it that way, is about is about uh, protecting a sensitive site, a sensitive area, maybe militarily sensitive from uh, from you know potential electronically guided attack. Yes, absolutely. So obviously in Kaliningrad, there's going to be uh, Russian troops, there'll be bases, there'll be sensitive pieces of equipment that they don't want other nations to see. They don't want, of course, um, any other, any sort of foreign weapons to be able to use GPS to target specific areas in Kaliningrad. And so this is all believed to be a defensive measure by Russia. But of course, it also can be potentially quite dangerous because... Mm. Um, they can also confuse um, other aircraft. Uh, they can confuse um, air traffic controllers by disrupting these GPS signals. Um, and so everyone I've been speaking to today does say it's quite a quite a reckless move of them. Yes. I mean, is it legal under whatever relevant international aviation law? Uh, not that Russia would necessarily care. I, I, I don't know, John. Sorry, I can't answer that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, whether it's legal or not. Um, it's, yeah. it's definitely not accept it, acceptable. Yeah. Well, either way, you can imagine Russia aren't losing too much sleep over it. While, while you're with us, Larissa, uh, uh, Grant Chaps is also calling, isn't he, for an increase in the proportion of, of money that this country, the UK, spends on defence, wants it up to 3 3%. Three yes, and that's, um, you know, for the defence sector to say that now, um, it's quite, um, quite, quite amazing, really. Um, he, he previously said it when he was 
uh, running for a uh, leader a long time ago. Um, but of course, now Rishi Sunak's under huge press pressure to increase the defence budget. He didn't give uh, defence any more money in the budget last week. Two ministers have already come forward to say that there should be more money. And for his defence secretary to now say that, you know, hitting the 2.5 percent target, um, which is what he's pledged to do at some point, um, mm. uh, isn't good enough, um, is making things quite, quite tricky for, for, for Sunak at the moment. Yes. I mean, maybe maybe you can only speculate about motive, Larissa. I mean, you know, I try, as you know, not to be a cynic, but I do, I do wonder whether has this to do with what all defence secretaries do, which is to lobby for more money for, for defence, has it to do with the coming election, in which he'll want to make it a bit of an election issue and a challenge to the other side? Is, has it to do with Grant Chap's own leadership ambitions? I guess it, it's perfectly conceivable it has to do with all of those things. Well, you'll be pleased to know we did ask him uh, whether he did want to run for uh, the leadership of the Conservative Party, and he wouldn't rule it out. So that was quite interesting in itself. Wouldn't rule it out, as we say, speaks volumes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Lewis, lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much.